It's really tough to be the number one ranked athlete because the only way really is down. Like if you can't defend that, you're only going to go down. I feel like it's definitely a tough position to be in and trying to stay up there is going to be harder than getting there. It's going to be hot. We're currently based out in Club La Santa in Lanzarote, which is pretty much my second home, to be honest. I spend almost half the year here and then half the year in the UK back in my, my other home. So I've been coming to train in Lanzarote since around kind of 2014 when I was training for my first ever triathlon when I made the switch from swimming to triathlon. and. Just training here made me so strong, like the conditions here are absolutely brutal. You've got the heat, you've got the wind, you've got hills. It just makes you a tough athlete and I think it's allowed me to race anywhere in the world and just cope with whatever conditions are thrown at me. Oh yeah. Bring your bike in. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's okay. There's a ballet party for you. So the beginning of this year, I was out training here in Club La Santa in Lanzarote. I just remember one session where I'd pushed it quite hard and I felt really, I was absolutely buzzing. I was like, I'm already getting in great shape and it's quite early in the year. And then I think it was that evening I was like, Mm, I can feel a bit of a pain in my hip. Oh, good. Yeah, break my hip and fix it again. So. I've seen the video. <laughs> I've seen the video. OK, do we come through? Yeah, sure. Okay. Mentally, I was struggling then because I was like, Mm, are there going to be big doubts on the year ahead? There's big question marks now in my mind and I really just wanted to go and find out what we was dealing with. So that was probably when I was struggling the most and was probably having the tears and the tantrums because I was like, I knew in myself that this was going to be quite bad even before we went and got a scan. So I saw Reese belting past the other morning. Yeah. He's, he's um, mainly focusing on running at the moment. He's going to do a half marathon when we get home, so... Um, Lucy had an absolutely phenomenal season last year, and then this year has been nothing short of an emotional roller coaster, really. She was diagnosed with a stress fracture in the femoral head, which is basically the top of the femur. It, it meant that she was sidelined uh, from world championship races, all of the PTO races, the sub eight project. We was told that it could potentially be a career ending injury if she didn't rehabilitate it properly. So once you hear that sort of information from a consultant, you take things pretty seriously. At the end of 2021, I was probably at the highest point in my career. I'd just won my first ever world title. I'd gone PTO rank number one. I was kind of just flying high, really. Pretty much done every single format of triathlon. I'd gone and raced it, I'd loved it. I just kind of felt like on top of the world, like give me anything and I'll be able to do it. and then to be told that actually, if I don't deal with this injury in the right way, it could actually end my career.
that was quite scary because I felt like I had just been at the highest point of my career. It was quite hard to take when I'd been in such a good place to be told, actually, this could be the end if you're not smart with this. We initially really focused on why the injury happened, preventing it happening again. We dived into biomechanics, we dived into nutrition, we did psychology work, and actually we did everything so that I wasn't just gonna come back a stronger athlete physically and obviously less injury prone, but I was gonna come back a stronger, more whole rounded athlete in every single sense. At that point, I wasn't really able to do much physical training, but I was so motivated there that we were tapping into so many different elements of what it is to be an elite athlete. And I already felt at that point I was going to come back stronger, even though I wasn't even back on a bike or running at that point. A big goal of mine was definitely to try and be back for the Collins Cups. She's working her way to the finishing line now, and it'll be the winner of the second. I reached out to the team here at Captains. I said, you know what, I'm looking really good. I'm feeling ready, like I could be back on the team. And actually then to not get picks, I think, to be honest, it just shoved a rocket up my ass. I was like, I am ready, and I want to be back on that start line, proving that you should have picked me. And it just gave me that extra motivation that I needed and actually I think we saw that when I was racing in Slovakia the day after the Collins Cup. I was angry and I wanted to prove I deserved to be back there and I think I did do that. Well, there was a disappointment, obviously, going to the Collins Cup that we were going to have no Lucy Charles Barkley there. She had been the name of 2021. But then watching what she was able to do, overcoming all those months of injury, having to do all that work on her own, there's nobody around, you wonder if she's going to get back to that level. And then the day after the Collins Cup, racing at the World Championships, she goes there and devastates all of the competition, realizing that Lucy Charles Barkley is back is hungry and the second half of the season the elite athletes are going to have to worry about her fighting out for the top of the podium. I am definitely 100% back baby! <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the girls were asking, will you be in Dallas? And at that moment, I didn't know whether that would be enough. I, I hoped it would be enough to get a wild card pick to go and race. Um, and I guess a lot of them were starting to think, oh God, maybe Lucy will be there. And we need to now factor that into our racing strategy. And it was probably quite obvious that after that performance, I wanted to go and race again over that distance. I think the 100K distance does really suit me as an athlete. So um, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool to be back and racing that distance. I love to train in the heat. I absolutely hate being cold. So I never pick racing in cold climates because I do enjoy the heat. I prefer to race in that environment, I think. I feel like I will incorporate some specific heat work going into that race just to be sure that it's not going to hamper my performance. Quite a long swim with like two and a half K of hard work around threshold, so perfect for the distance we'll swim in Dallas, so like threshold and just above threshold, so yeah, feeling good. One of the things about Lucy Charles Barkley having such a great race at the World Championships is that they haven't seen her all season long, so she is really this commodity that no one's quite sure. We know how well she swims, she goes from the gun. She'll change any race that she's in. And so all the women who've had great seasons so far are gonna say, there's one athlete that we haven't beaten so far in 2022, that's Lucy Charles Barkley. And she's gonna be in the minds of all those top elite women. 
She never goes on the start line to, to come second. It's not in her nature. She's going there to, to win and she's going there to, to prove that she's back and she wants to be on top of the world again at the end of the year. Ultimately, it all comes from within that I just want to win whatever race I'm starting. The women are definitely up in their game and potentially that's off the back of having these great racing opportunities, more prize money, everyone wants to be at the forefront of these races and seeing Ashley Gentle come in from short course and really delivering has been really impressive. Ashley Gentle will claim the first ever PTO Canadian Open. Athletes like Chelsea Sodaro, who has been a huge inspiration to all female athletes to come back from having a child and actually racing like phenomenally well in Edmonton was really, really inspiring. Chelsea Sodaro takes the podium. Obviously, Paula Finley has been racing incredibly well as well. So there's just so many athletes performing better than maybe they ever have. And it's really, really exciting for women's sport. Having been at the top of the PTO rankings, that was pretty nice while it lasted. Um, I definitely would love to be back there. I feel like once you're there, you've definitely got the big target on your back. Everyone wants that top spot. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely hungry to be back there. There is nothing more motivating than being written off or being doubted. I feel like I've spent my whole athletic career being doubted. Coming into triathlon, everyone just thought she's just a swimmer. You know what, I can do this and I will be one of the greatest athletes. If people are going to doubt you and write you off, you're going to want to come back and prove them wrong. The only pressure that really comes when I'm racing is from myself. I want to win. So I really do feel like now I've found my sport. Triathlon is what I was put on this planet to do. I see Dallas as a really important stage for the American athletes. You know, the sport started in 1978 in America. Its birthplace was the United States. But the rest of the world has started to take this sport and really claim it for their own. The Canadians had the Canadian Open then you move over to Europe for the Collins Cup, and we saw the domination of the European athletes. Well, now we're back to America, where it all started. And I think the American athletes are going to have to make a statement. They're going to have to look for the podium. They're going to have to be aggressive. They're going to have to take risk. This is where it started, but the world has taken this sport. And if America wants to own it, they're going to have to get the job done when we race back in Dallas. You can run for a long time. The PTO 100 still getting well known around the world, but it's standard. It's going to be two kilometers of swimming, 80 kilometers of biking, and then 18 kilometers of running, making 100 kilometer total. Tell that long tongue liar, tell that midnight rider, tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter, tell the guy's gonna cut him down. Tell the God's gonna cut him down. Tell the God's gonna cut him down. It is a very hot race. And so athletes are gonna really have to be prepared. I'm sure they all know that it's well into the 90s, the humidity. Cause you can run for a long time. 
I think it worries everybody first and foremost. I'll be ready for the heat, both from the conditions and the athletes, yeah. Look, he's oh. in absolute pain. Look he at him. Oh, this is awful. What? No, this is not good. He's, he's in all sorts of trouble. The heat and humidity really took a factor, and we saw some massive cramping, particularly out onto the run course. Just training here made me so strong. Like, the conditions here are absolutely brutal. It just makes you a tough athlete. Cover, so it's, it's humid very, very today. So they are racing in a lot hotter and more humid conditions than the women. Certainly something I'm getting ready for. I put myself in a dark place. Even though you might be the fittest guy on the day, it's not necessarily going to be the first athlete across the line. So I think this is going to be one of those races where just because you led after the swim and just because you led after the bike doesn't mean you're going to be on the podium at the end of the day. <laughs> we did actually watch Edmonton. These women are up in their game, but I'm not in the field and I have a different kind of element to racing when I'm there. So I did speak to a couple of the women. They said the party's over now. We did enjoy the racing while you weren't here and we know that time's up now. One of the exciting things about the Open coming up is that Lucy Charles Barkley is coming in fresh, motivated, off a world championship victory, but it's not gonna be easy. This is a field of incredible athletes, particularly when you look at the resumes. Taylor Nibb, the woman who absolutely dominated in 2021. USA claims six. So the real question mark is, is this the Taylor Nibb of 2021, or is this somebody coming in ill-prepared? Crosses the line at second. Then you look at people like Paula Finley, who we know have had a phenomenal 2022. Look at Ashley Gentle, who's been virtually undefeated. Ashley Gentle towards the finishing line. And then finally, Flora Duffy, who won't be happy with what happened at Collins Cup. We know that she's Olympic Games gold medalist. We know what she can do. She's virtually won at every distance. And I think she'll look at the Collins Cup and say, I really didn't get the job done. That's five women, only three spots on the podium. Somebody spectacular is going to be missing the podium at the Open. Nash is the women's side. The men's side is absolutely out of this world. Lionel Sanders, he loves this distance. He's in great form as he gets ready for the last part of the season. Sam Long. That's how it's done, baby. If he wins one race in 2022 that he wants, that is the US Open. Yeah, Dallas is obviously an opportunity to beat Lionel and, and Sam. I'm fully aware there's lots of other very good athletes. Ali Brownlee, just coming off an Ironman win recently, so we know that he's back in great form. Daniel Beckegaard just came off his win at the Collins Cup. We know that he's a three-game racer. Then you look at Ditlev. This guy, 24 years of age, he won the huge race in Roth, and he just keeps getting stronger and stronger. If I have a good result in Dallas, if I could go there and win that race, it definitely cements where I'm at. This race in Dallas is about redemption, proving to myself that, that I belong. With millions of dollars on the line, not just on the race itself, but more importantly, the end of the season rankings, athletes, even if they've had a good start to the season, they're going to have to execute one more time coming into Dallas. And if you're a new athlete who hasn't raced most of the season, you know, somebody like Lucy Charles Barkley, you're going to move up a lot of points and a lot of dollars with a big race in Dallas. The million dollar question for me with Sam Laidlow is, which Sam Laidlow are we going to get on the day? Is it the arrogant, confident guy? Automatic, charismatic, and aquatic. Line was stuck, why so static? Or is it the guy who finished the Collins Cup, you know, realizing he was 30 minutes behind the guys that he was given some jaw to? I've got nothing to, to prove. I'm just I'm just 23 year old trying to trying to be good. There's other people there like I feel like the pressure's on guys like Alistair and Lionel and people who, who have already had so many results and are expected to win again. Pressure definitely makes diamonds. The athletes who can perform best under that pressure will reap the biggest rewards and get those major titles. I think pressure should be a privilege. If you have been put pressure, it means that you've achieved something to, to, to be in that position first and foremost. 
Generally at the moment, at the stage where I'm at, it's more pressure that's just coming from myself. The reward is going to be greater because for the pressure to be high, there has to be something huge at stake. The question that we keep asking, has Sam Laidlo actually just kept something back? Lucy Charles Barkley hadn't done any racing this year, unfortunately, to get herself in this team. I can see your fading into view Aside from my soul Oh, look, he is in absolute pain. Look at him. Oh, this is awful. Think I passed out with your photo. You can feel great in training, don't really know how your body is going to behave. The body can only take so much. I feel stronger than I've ever felt. There was a lot of external noise going on around people's opinions, which really got under my skin and made me angry. I am going to prove you wrong. I'm a strong athlete, both physically and mentally, and don't mess with me. In anybody's career, you can never say that one race is all or nothing, but I think there's a lot on the line here. There's never been so much at stake, so much on the line. I definitely need a good race in Dallas to get me that top 10 ranking becoming PTO rank number one. I feel like it's definitely a tough position to be in and trying to stay up there is going to be harder than getting there. You gather me when I'm in pieces Fetch my soul when I have lost the feeling I think one of the things that we've realized so far in this PTO distance is that you can expect the unexpected. Well, this is the box office that we were really excited for. It. And look at her, she's absolutely spent there. Lionel Sanders puts his foot down, raises that finish line. Look, he's lapping up this round. What an incredible performance you are watching. Have you ever met an athlete quite like her? And he says, I am going to take the victory in this matchup. What have you got? I am definitely 100% back. I can see your fading into view.